my last question to you, Sharif, uh, uh, because it, it, I see it many times repeated, it's about the security and the regulations. And I know you, you have you have a personal experience uh, exploring that in in the region and for sure exposure to beyond the uh, the, the region. What is what is like what was your experience and what what is allowed what is not allowed and what is your vision about that? Yeah, so um, I think that it's more rosy in the U.S. because of uh, the regulations and all of what we are talking about there are American companies. So right, so all the regulations, the risk of data leakage within the U.S. it's it's within the US, right? So AT&T, Verizon, Sprint, all of those guys will be fine. Now, the problem comes to Europe and Middle East and Africa. APAC has a bit of, uh, I would say, different regulation, but mainly EMEA, which is very similar in regulation uh, when it comes to data privacy and, uh, and of course, our lovely DDRA and, uh, and all of those guys. And that's a bigger, uh, I would say, blocker for, of course, adopting the public cloud. And there is so many different navigations, which is recently started those hyperscales to provide tools for us to have a chance of winning. So if you looked at most of the wins that happened the past four years, before this year or the last year, you will see them that it's happening on the B2B because we are offering service to the customer, not in the telco, which is considered as critical infrastructure. Right? Critical infrastructure to the country means it's a national data. It cannot be tampered. It cannot be leaked has to be hosted within the country. And, and that, of course, accelerated the adoption of expanding the public cloud in every single country or major hub, like in UAE, in Saudi, in Qatar. In Europe, we have a lot, a lot of data centers deployed in Europe, uh, in South Africa. Um, so data sovereignty is must in order to start the journey, I would say, for specific critical workloads internally to the telco. The second part is that we started to have programs called Cloud for Sovereignty. We started back in the old days to build government clouds, which is, can be tapped to the government. So the government personnel can access the data center, can inspect, can tap, mirror the data. In public clouds, they cannot. So if you spin up a VM and you open up your VPN, no one will know, right? Uh, even if they are blocked by DBI in the country. Uh, because in, in an essence, that this public cloud is an international uh, land, and you can have uh, many different countries hosted the, hosting their application within that uh, land, right? So if you tap it, you you break a lot of law. Um, so so first, we need to have the data center in country, of course, to help you out in the discussion with your security team. Second, the the cloud for sovereignty is no longer a government cloud. Government cloud failed because of the adoption of services was taking years. So it wasn't as the same agility of public cloud. So the, as Microsoft, we killed that program. Uh, we no longer build public clouds. We uh, public cloud for governments. We now the, expose more controls to the operators, like transparent logs. If someone tapped the hardware or access the hardware, I can immediately get a message. I can bring my own keys for encryption. So I can have my hardware security modules on-prem at my site, and I'm encrypting all the data at, at the cloud. So even if they, someone leaked the data from the country to somewhere else, if in, in case there is a trust issue or or the major issue, which is Cloud Act of US, which is taking the data, if they won uh, a case on that this customer has a, committed a criminal activity, so this means that they can actually ask Microsoft to provide the data or AWS or Oracle or, or even all the hyperscalers. Um, so as a risk mitigation, we provide bring your own key. Uh, as ability for the HSM. The second part is around confidential compute. It's a new technology in the market. It does data at motion, uh, sorry, data at use. So this means that when we encrypt the data and it goes to the processor, it has to decrypt it. So someone can sniff from the hardware level. So now with Intel and AMD, they produce a new technology, even NVIDIA, that you can encrypt with an attestation of that key. So even on the and processing capability, you can have that encryption so nobody can tap in your network. So that brings in more controls and sovereignty controls to the public clouds for those mission criticals. And also the logs, right? So all the logs are being, uh, logs that you even didn't have access to. Um, but would that be enough? That's the question, right? Yeah. Usually almost 60% yes. It can work with OSS, BSS, 
uh, but it doesn't work with having a core or that core network hosted or being manipulated by the public cloud. That's a risk, not a security issue, it's a risk. So usually what we do is that we have these controls in place and the best architecture today is to have one plus one. So for example, you have on site, you have your hosted infrastructure and you have plus two on the public cloud or the vice versa, right? You always have to have your backup plan because the risk of shutting down the cloud or, and I know all of this question I usually get, uh, is that I always have to look at the risk factor, my exit plan, what will be, because I saw another question also, what should be the exit criteria if I adopted a full public cloud uh, landscape? Um, so th there is a lot of risk in plan that we need to look at, which is again, having this uh, architecture in mind, the data plane is always running. If I cut the wire between the public cloud, all my distributed edges will not be impacted. And this is a strategy that we are building in our products today as, uh, as Microsoft. And I know AWS and Google are doing the same as well uh, in the roadmaps. And, the, uh, and, and again, this risk factor is important as well with having the security capabilities. But again, this is recent. It wasn't there before. When we used to encrypt data from on-premise HSM to cloud, it used to have performance impact. Now we have better technology with those security vendors. And I think this relaxes the conversation at least by 99%. Great. With one point on top, telcos needs to do the data classification because this is the biggest exercise. They don't declassify all their data as critical, right? Which is not the case. Yeah. And that loses a big opportunity, loses a big opportunity for business. So the first above all data classification risk for our, from our architecture point of view, then controls. Those are, I would say, three main categories. Uh, thanks, Sharif. That was really a very comprehensive answer.